It was lovely sunny weather when Susan Day came to visit me at my studio in London, UK. She'd come from London, Ontario in Canada and we wanted to talk about all things mosaic. So I've been really excited looking at your work on the internet, so we've not met in person before. We connected over Instagram, didn't we? And we we've did. We've had technical conversations about a few things. We did, and um, about some plays, it's like I was interested in what you were using. I think we have a similar thing that we're making, similar communities we're working with, different methods, but what you were doing was really, really intriguing to me and to how you were connecting with communities. So, um, your work is on a huge scale. It's really fascinating to me because it's much, it's much bigger than my work. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest? Tell us about the scale. I'm trying to think in, I'm kind of half metric, half imperial. So um, the house that that we did mm. is ten meters high mm -hmm. and eight meters wide. It's vast. So it's that, yeah, and so, and all of the tiles. In that project, they were all made by me. That was definitely a pandemic mm -hmm. project. Some of the community engaged projects, I'm working on right now, one right now that is 600 square feet, so 200 square meters. Mm. And this is the one with the AIDS and the HIV community? That was the previous one. That one's finished. So now I'm working on one with the Children's Museum, mm -hmm. which was started before the pandemic. But um, yeah, the one with the safe injection site mm. was really, like that was amazing and I'm really, I just love that work. I had clients who were coming in to access services mm -hmm. and they, I would get them to stop and make tiles with us. Mm -hmm. So they made tiles. So many, so like first responders, um, staff, and then the main component and probably the most poignant component of it was the family members who have either lost someone to overdose and addiction or who um, are traveling with some traveling alongside someone who is you know experiencing that so they would come because they wanted to you know they wanted to me like memorialize these people yeah, commemorate them celebrate yeah. them yeah celebrate them and and kind of put their names out there like these these are human beings they existed and they're you know I'm not ready to forget forget that they existed they're important so they would come to these workshops in my studio and maybe be working at a table like this mm -hmm. with other people and the conversations that came up were amazing mm -hmm. and just the the tiles that people made were amazing like I was collecting names and because I thought I made I wanted to have some memorial thing with the the last piece at care point which was the safe injection site mm -hmm. and um First of all, I looked for stamps that were a font that I could cut, that were somber enough, you know, mm. that really had a simple song, and I couldn't find one, so I thought, oh, I'm just gonna make my Did own. Did you make your own font? So I made my own font. Did you? And I, I can show you a picture of it, and the stamps that came from it were really beautiful, and so I have buckets of all of these names collected, mm. and they've been, like I, I make, I press mold the tiles, then I bisque fire them, then I rub them with black stain or under glaze, mm. wipe it off, mm and then I glaze them. So when you, you when you say press mold, you're using a plaster press mold, just so people who are well, watching Well, actually I made bisque, I made bisque press molds. Okay, so you made so them in clay? I made them in clay because they're more durable. Mm -hmm. oh. So your work, you from reading about you and looking at what you're making, it sounds like you came from, did you come from a ceramic background? My work was shown in the realm of visual art. Mm. So I did large, I've, I've always, I've used ceramic as a tool for drawing. Did Major? you do a degree in ceramics? Or course I in studied ceramics? a lot, but I kept dropping out. Okay, yeah, yeah. so right, great. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I went to a, a high school that like a... Secondary school, we sec call it, yeah. Yeah, yeah secondary school. Um, that was an art school. It was a yeah. really great school. Oh. And my first class was ceramic. Uh -huh. And I really connected with uh, the instructor. We're still very good friends. And um, it was a rough period of my life. Like I was really, a lot of stuff was happening. So it was really important to me. Um, and then I, I kept studying drawing and painting and ceramics. And I ended up going to university in Nova Scotia to Nova Scotia College of Art and mm -hmm. Design. And I did a few terms there, but I couldn't afford to do the whole thing. Was so it not free in Canada? Oh no, no, it's very expensive. Yeah. I think when I was at university, it was still Free. Oh, the last year that could have been of a grant. I probably wouldn't have studied art ceramics at college because to borrow money to study for four years, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not from a rich family. I've got, you know, 
I don't think I would have done it. I don't think I'd have got all that education. Such a waste that we're not putting that time and energy and skill set into the next generation. It, and, it, and not valuing the arts. Because not. it's a huge income for the country. It is. And all the statistics in every country, like the, everything with the arts brings in, so, like, you know, you put, I don't know what the numbers are, but you put five pounds in and you get a hundred pounds oh. out or something. Someone said, an older woman artist said to me, she said, just keep your brush wet, whatever your brush is, you know, whatever your tool is, just keep something on the go. And it was such good advice because I always had work on the go and I always had a kiln in the basement and I was always kind of, you know, that was always there, but I, I didn't even identify as an artist, you know, for a long, long, long time. And yet I was showing and I was showing like all over Canada and some of my work, you know, was in New York City when I was young. The biggest hurdle was convincing me mm. that what I was doing was art or you know, I don't even care if it's art. I don't even care. It's valuable. It's valuable. It had a, had a value. And it has, and I think if, if the value only goes as far as us, mm. that's, that's enough. You know, but obviously what we're both doing goes much further and that's an amazing, um, impactful thing. Like impactful, you know, like we're making tiles, which in the big scheme of things is like, how important is that? But it really is. It matters to people. It, we used to always go into schools and communities and run workshops where people made things, but by sending the boxes of tiles home to their houses, People do things that I didn't expect and make things and use things that mean something to them. Is it? Any yeah, tiles that get? Yeah, look at that great guitar. You know, like, like the mosaic, you know, everyone who makes a tile is all an important part of the community. Every single person I think is an important part of the community. Like every tile. Like if you took one out, there'd be a hole. It wouldn't it wouldn't yeah. be it wouldn't be balanced, it wouldn't be the same. Everybody's valuable. And everyone's framing everyone else too. Like it's like all of those things. Yeah, it's it's really yeah, it's interesting. It's pretty. You need the big tiles. You need the little tiles. You need the you need the busy tiles. You need the karma tiles. You need the loudness. You need the words. You need the humour. So tell me why you love clay in particular. Hmm. Well, my earlier work um, was about my mum was severely disabled. I grew up with a very disabled mother, and. Um, I, a lot of my earlier work was about her and about the objects, like we had these objects in our house that uh, were things that she needed to, you know, just accomplish the business of living, like mm -hmm. just eating, bathing, you know, things like that. And so I did images of those on clay, mm -hmm. on clay tablets and on dinnerware and stuff like that. And they were scratchy drawings. And I really loved the clay in that it was, you know, soft and malleable, mm -hmm. but then could break when it was fired and I really like how the clay kind of is like a body. There's lots of terminology to describe clay, like a body as well. It's got oh, lips, yes. it's got bottoms, it's got shoulders. Yeah. And we are like a vessel um, yeah, totally. full of spirit, soul, guts, whatever. Yeah. We see ourselves as vessels. Mm -hmm. So that was my, that's why I love clay a lot. And I, and what I age feel, was that that you started? Um, 17, you know, 17, 18, 16, 17, yeah. 18. And I, I still really love the material. I feel like I understand it. And I, sometimes I think it's the only thing I know how to do. You know, like I, because I put so many, you know that Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours thing? No. Like if you can, if you spend 10,000 hours on anything, no. you, you're an expert on it. You, like, you know, we've, we've done, like we're three times around or something. Yeah. You know, like it's, you know, we get it. It was really special to meet Susan Day. We've got a very similar practice. We work at large scale, we work with community, we work with ceramics. Two sides of the same coin as we're both in London on different sides of the world. It was a really special day.